Hello guys. Welcome to our channel Ask Prep. Today's series is for 11th class biology. We will be studying chapter 10 cell cycle and cell division in detail. We have also added important notes for your exam preparation. All the best for your exam. Starting with introduction. What is a cell cycle? The cell cycle is the process by which a cell replicates its DNA, grows and divides into two new cells. It ensures that each daughter cell receives a complete set of genetic information. Cell division is a crucial mechanism across all living organisms, facilitating DNA replication and cellular growth in a well-organized manner. Phases of the cell cycle. The cell cycle consists of two major phases, interphase and M phase. First is interphase. Interphase is the longest phase of the cell cycle where the cell grows, replicates DNA and prepares for division. It is subdivided into three stages. G1, gap 1. Phase. The cell grows and is metabolically active but does not replicate DNA. S, synthesis. Phase. DNA replication occurs, doubling the amount of DNA. Centrioles duplicate in the cytoplasm. G2, gap 2. phase protein synthesis happens in preparation for mitosis and the cell continues growing g0 phase some cells exit g1 into a non dividing state called g0 remaining metabolically active but dividing only when needed example heart cells this is the basic information now let's understand in detail how this works so what exactly is the cell cycle Well the cell cycle is a process of organized step that takes place within a cell causing it to produce two new daughter cells. This process can be split into two major phases. The first of these phases is known as interphase during which the cell grows and DNA is replicated. You should know that the cell tends to spend most of its time during the interphase throughout its life span. Once certain condition within the cell are met which we will be discussing later in this video the cell cycle moves on to the mitotic phase where the duplicated DNA and the cell contents are divided and the cell ultimately splits itself into two daughter cells So let's start out by investigating the interphase Interphase occurs in three stages The first stage is known as the first gap or the G1 phase. During the G1 phase, the cell accumulates the energy, proteins, RNA and other building blocks needed for DNA synthesis which occurs in the next stages. Furthermore, the cell grows larger and duplicates some of its cellular contents and organelles. The second stage is known as the S phase or what I like to refer to as the synthesis phase. During the synthesis phase the cell synthesizes a complete copy of its nuclear DNA resulting in two identical pairs of DNA known as sister chromatids. These sister chromatids are held together by cosine proteins and linked together at the region at the center of the two chromatids called the centromere. Furthermore, during the synthesis phase, a structure known as the centrosome is also duplicated. Each centrosome comprises of two microtubule links known as centrioles. The two centromeres will be critical in the later stages of the cell cycle, especially in the movement of DNA during cell division. Finally, In the G2 phase, the cell makes the final preparation needed before the cell enters the mitotic phase. During the G2 phase, the cell synthesizes more proteins, accumulates energy, and dismantles its cytoskeleton to provide resources for the metallic phase during which the cisteri chromatids will be moved around. This the cell also continues to grow and duplicate some of its organelles. This is interphase. Now moving with second one which is M phase. mitotic phase the m phase involves actual cell division and consists of two processes karyokinesis nuclear division and cytokinesis cytoplasmic division 
The karyokinesis stage of cell division involves further four stages. First is prophase. First stage of mitotic cell division, following S and G2 phases of interphase. In S and G2 phases, new DNA molecules are intertwined, but not distinct. Prophase starts with condensation of chromosomal material. Centrosomes, duplicated during S phase, move toward opposite cell poles. Cells in late prophase lack Golgi complexes, endoplasmic reticulum, nucleolus, and nuclear envelope when viewed under a microscope. Second is metaphase, second stage of mitosis, marked by complete disintegration of the nuclear envelope. Chromosomes spread throughout the cell cytoplasm, and by the end of this stage, the condensation is complete and visible under a microscope. Third is anaphase. At the start of anaphase, the third phase of karyokinesis, each chromosome positioned at the metaphase plate divides simultaneously. The resulting daughter chromatids, now known as daughter chromosomes, begin moving toward opposite poles. Fourth is telophase. At the start of telophase, the final phase of karyokinesis. Chromosomes that have reached the poles become less condensed and lose their distinct structure. Individual chromosomes become indiscernible and chromatin material tends to gather at each pole. Cytokinesis Cytokinesis is the process of cell division that occurs after the nuclear division phase, karyokinesis, in eukaryotic cells. Cytokinesis is started by the formation of a furrow in the plasma membrane. The furrow deepens and eventually meets at the center, dividing the cytoplasm into two. Now let's understand the mitotic phase in detail. Now this leads us to the mitotic phase. The mitotic phase is a multi-step process during which the duplicated chromosomes are aligned, separated and moved into two new identical daughter cells. Mitosis occurs in two stages. Karyokinesis is a stage where the division of the cell nucleus occurs, while the second stage being cytokinesis is a where the cell itself is divided into two daughter cells. The first and longest step of karyokinesis is known as the prophase. During the prophase, the nuclear envelope or the membrane of the nucleus and other membranous organelles such as the Golgi apparatus are broken down. Furthermore, the sister chromatids condense and coil into denser structure known as chromosomes, which become fully visible under a microscope. The centromeres also move to opposite poles of the cell, forming a microtubule structure known as the mitotic spindle. After the prophase, we have the prometaphase. During the prominent, the chromosomes continue to condense. The metallic spindle continues to stretch across the nucleus as the centromeres continue to move apart. Protein structure known as kinetic cores from its the centromeres of the chromosome and function by attaching the chromosomes to the microtubules of the mitotic spindle. The third step of karyokinesis is known as the metaphase. During metaphase, the mitotic spindle aligns all the captured and condensed sister chromatids along the equatorial plane, otherwise known as the metaphase plane, which exists midway between the two poles of the cell. The next step is known as the anaphase. During the anaphase, the cosine proteins holding this circumities together degrade, causing the chromatids to separate at the centromere. During the anaphase, each committed now referred to as a chromosome is pulled together towards the centromeres located at the opposite poles of the cell. This is done by the moving the chrom chromosome through the microtubule structure formed at the mitotic spindle. The pulling of the microtubule structure away from each other also has the added effect of elongating the cell. Finally, during the telophase, the chromosomes arrive at the opposite pulse of the elongated cell and begin to deconvince. Belonging itself forms two sets of nuclear envelopes which surround each set of chromosomes. Furthermore, the metallic splendid disassembles into its constituent monitors 
which will be used to support the structure of the EH daughter cell. Now let's move on to cytokinesis. As we discussed before, the second portion of the metallic phase called cytokinesis is the process in which the cell physically separates itself into two daughter cells. For animal cells, cytokinesis begins during the anaphase where a ring of acting filaments called a contractile wing forms and tightens around the equatorial plane. This wing is pulled tighter and tighter by motor proteins to form a fissa known as the cleavage bureau until the two daughter cells completely separate from each other. Next up is what is meiosis. Meiosis is a specialized type of cell division that reduces the chromosome number by half, resulting in haploid cells. It is essential for sexual reproduction, producing gametes, sperm and egg cells. Meiosis occurs in two phases, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Phases of meiosis 1, prophase 1, consists of five stages, leptotene, zygotene, pachytene, diplotene and diakinesis. Leptotene, chromosomes start becoming visible. Zygotene, homologous chromosomes pair up, forming tetrads. Pachytene, crossing over occurs between homologous chromosomes. Diplotene, synaptonemal complex dissolves and chiasmata become visible. Diakinesis, chromosomes fully condense and the meiotic spindle forms. Metaphase 1. Bivalent chromosomes align at the equatorial plate. Anaphase 1. Homologous chromosomes separate, but sister chromatids remain attached. Telophase 1. Nuclear membranes form, followed by cytokinesis, resulting in two daughter cells with half the original chromosome number. Moving with phases of meiosis. 2. Prophase 2. Chromosomes recondense and the nuclear membrane dissolves. Metaphase 2. Chromosomes align at the equatorial plate. Anaphase 2. Sister chromatids separate and move toward opposite poles. Telophase 2. Chromatids are enclosed by nuclear envelopes, completing the process of meiosis and resulting in four haploid daughter cells. Let's understand both in detail. Many organisms pass their genes to their offspring through sexual reproduction. This begins when two gametes unite to form an embryo that is genetically unique from the parent organisms. The embryo then grows into an adult who in turn passes their genetic information on to their own offspring. Gametes are formed through a process called meiosis. The cells that undergo meiosis to produce the gametes are called germline cells. In diploid organisms, germline cells have two copies of each chromosome. Germline cells undergo meiosis to produce haploid gametes which only have one copy of each chromosome. These haploid gametes fuse to form a diploid embryo that grows into the adult. Meiosis is just one step in the life cycle of a germline cell. Similar to mitosis, the cell also passes through the interface G1, S and G2 stages before they enter meiosis. The DNA inside a germinal cell is duplicated before meiosis begins. During the S phase, the duplicated germline chromosomes are called sister chromatids. These chromatids remain attached to each other until the second cell division event in meiosis. There are two cell division events during meiosis. The first division meiosis one results in two unique daughter cells that have half the amount of DNA. As with parent germline cell, the second division meiosis 2 results in a four unique haploid cells that only have one copy of each chromosome. These haploid cells are the gametes that could go on to produce an offspring through sexual reproduction. Let's look more closely at each of the division events. Meiosis begins with prophase 1. In this stage, the DNA condenses to form chromosomes. Here we see the duplicative sister chromatids join together at the centromere. They stay fused at the centromere throughout meiosis 1. Next, each pair of hemilicus chromosomes undergo synapses to form a co complex involving two pairs of sister chromatids. Chromosomal material is exchanged between the two pairs of sister chromatids. This event is called a recombination or more commonly crossing over. After crossing over, the sister chromatids for each chromosomes are no longer identical to one another. 
This is one of the reasons why no two siblings aside from twins are genetically identical. There are several more key steps in prophase 1. The nuclear membrane begins to break down the two centrosomes, migrate to opposite ends of the cell and microtubules appear. The microtubules then attach to the chromosomes. The next phase of meiosis 1 is called metaphase 1. Here the synapsed chromosomes align at the equator of the cell. The chromosomes align randomly which results in different combinations each time meiosis occurs. The next phase is anaphase 1. During this phase, hemolytic chromosomes separate and migrate to the two poles of the cell. Importantly, the sister chromatid cerumen attach at their centromeres. The final steps of meiosis 1 are telophase 1 and cytokinesis. Here the cell divides into two daughter cells. Each of these two cells now undergo meiosis 2. Meiosis 2 is similar to mitosis. The first stage of meiosis 2 is prophase 2. Again chromosome condenses the nucleus, envelope breaks down and the spindle apparatus forms. The major difference between prophase 2 and prophase 1 is the fact that the daughter cells have only one copy of each harmonicus chromosome. So in prophase 2 there is no synapsis of homologous chromosomes or crossing over. In metaphase 2, the chromosomes align at the equator of the cell. Again, the alignment is random since the sister chromatids are no longer identical. There are many different possible ways for these chromosomes to align. In anaphase 2, the sister chromatids are pulled apart as the microtubules shorten. Also, the ends of the cell are pushed further apart as the microtubules elongate. In telophase 2, the nuclear membrane reforms and the cytoplasm is divided into the two haploid daughter cells. This division is called cytokinesis. Since meiosis 2 begin with two cells and each of those cells are split into two cells, we now have four unique haploid cells at the end of meiosis. These cells are gametes, two gametes, one form a father and one form a mother, may fuse to produce a diploid embryo. The resulting embryo then grows through many cycles of mitosis. Next is some key features. Key features of prophase are chromosomal condensation into compact mitotic chromosomes, each consisting of two chromatids attached at the centromere. Centrosomes move to opposite poles, radiating microtubules called asters. Key features of metaphase are spindle fibers attached to chromosome kinetochores. Chromosomes move to the spindle equator and align along metaphase plate via spindle fibers to both poles. Key features of the anaphase are centromeres split, separating chromatids. Chromatids migrate to opposite poles. Key features of telophase are chromosomes assemble around opposite spindle poles, losing their individual identity. A nuclear envelope forms around the chromosome clusters at each pole, resulting in the formation of two daughter nuclei. Components like the nucleolus, Golgi complex, and endoplasmic reticulum (ER) reassemble. Thanks for watching the video. We will drop the notes in the description of this video. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and share. See you in the next video and all the best for your exam.